So Google is starting to push out their new generative AI search experience and they're letting people beta test it right now. So I figured let's give it a shot. If you're interested in playing around with it and testing it yourself, you can head on over to labs.google.com, scroll down to the section here that says help shape the future of information and click on the get started button. If you're on a Google workspace plan, one of the paid plans, you're probably gonna get this search labs isn't available for your account right now. However, if you're just on a regular non-paid free Google account, there's a good chance you'll see this try AI powered overviews when you search option in Google. If you click this little button here, it will give you some prompts that you can try. Things like, what are the chances of seeing a shooting star? And tell me about Pier 57 in New York City. And if you click on one of them, you'll get an example of what the new generative search experience looks like. And we have our answer right here. In any 15 minute interval, there is a 20% probability that you will see at least one shooting star. You can ask follow-up questions like, how do I tell the difference between a shooting star and a satellite? It'll give you a follow-up answer, as well as cite some resources and and give more suggestions of what you could potentially search next. Now, if you want to start a fresh chat with this new Google generative experience, you could simply click the reset button, click reset again, and it will take you to this page with some example prompts, but also a chat box where you can ask anything. One of the first questions I always like to ask tools like this is who is Matt Wolf. I wanna know what you got on me. And like always, it shows the golfer over here on the right, but then everything it shows on the left is actually me. It also didn't give me any sort of chat response. It just gave me search results on this specific query. How many YouTube subscribers does Matt Wolf have? And once again, it just gave me search results for that query instead of giving me a chat response. So let's go ahead and reset it. And let's test some of the things that we might ask something like ChatGPT or Bing. Let's see if it'll write code for me. Let's start with some basic HTML code. Write me a basic website in HTML that sells surfboards. After a few seconds of generation, you can see it created a very, very basic website. Just looking at the code, I can tell it's all gonna be left aligned with very minimalistic style, white background, black text, just an ultra, ultra basic website. But it will write basic HTML code. Let's go ahead and reset it and see if it will write JavaScript code. I'll give it the prompt, write me JavaScript code for a basic side scroller game. After about 20 seconds of loading, it wrote this JavaScript code here. And I mean, it looks like it would work, but I'm not quite sure what to do with it. I feel like you normally would need like an HTML page for the JavaScript code to be seen on. I'm not a coder, but let's say, what do I do with this code? Let's see if it'll tell me how to actually run the code. To see the code for a simple side-scrolling game in JavaScript in action, you can copy the code into an HTML file and open the file in a web browser that runs JavaScript. All right, let's copy this whole code here. I'll paste it in and save it as an HTML file. I'll call it JavaScript test.html. Now, theoretically, if I open this up, yeah, it didn't actually work the way it said it would. Let's see if it'll troubleshoot. I pasted the code into an HTML file and it just displayed a white screen with my code written. What do I do next? Yeah, so it's not really super helpful at troubleshooting the issues. So this is something that definitely Microsoft Bing and ChatGPT do a lot better. Now, when I first started playing with this, I decided I would take to Twitter and ask what people thought. I put out this tweet. Google is starting to roll out their generative AI search experience. I want to put it to the test. So far, I don't feel like it improves the experience over standard search by very much. Any suggestions on how I should test it to see what it can really do? I got a handful of comments and figured I would try some of the stuff that it suggested. Zamsor here says, ask it to give step-by-step -step instructions on how to create an AI Larry Page clone. All right, give step-by-step -step instructions on how to create an AI Larry Page clone. After about 20 seconds of generation here, we've got some instructions. Collect a large data set of text and code that is representative of Larry Page's work and interests. Books, articles, blog posts, codes, and other documents that Page has written or worked on. Train a large language model on the collected data set. So yeah, I just gotta go do that next, easy. Fine tune the language model on a specific task. In this case, it would generate text similar to Larry Page's writing style. Evaluate the performance of the language model, deploy the language model. It is important to note that creating an AI Larry Page clone is a complex and challenging task. It requires a deep understanding of natural language processing, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. It also requires a large amount of data and computing resources. However, if done successfully, it could have a significant impact on the way we interact with computers and the world around us. Now, 
just out of curiosity, what would ChatGPT do? If I give it the same prompt, so ChatGPT actually came up with a similar reply. Step one, data collection. Step two, data cleaning. Step three, training. Step four, testing and iterating. Step five, deployment. And then it gives me this warning here. Please remember that even with these steps, the resulting AI won't truly be Larry Page. Damn it. It can only generate text based on the data it's been trained on. It can't think or possess knowledge or experience like a human. AI Big Thing suggests, if you wanna put it to the test, try searching for complex queries, ambiguous questions, or niche topics. It thrives on challenging tasks. Well, let's ask some ambiguous questions. I'm gonna click a reset here, and just for fun, who is he? Who is he and what is he to you? Is a song written by Bill Withers and Stan McKinney. Oh, okay, but why? American singer and songwriter Bill Withers was delusioned with music business and blamed Columbia's head of A&R, Mickey Eichner, for preventing him from recording in the studio. Okay, let's ask it a sort of local question. What is the best taco shop near me? So it suggested Sarita's Taco Shop, which is actually a pretty dang good taco shop near me. Loretto's, never actually had that one. Albert's, Fresh Mexican, that's actually the one that I go to the most often, so good choice. Silva's Taco Shop and Tavo's Taco and Beer, never had either of those two. What's interesting is I believe I would have gotten pretty much the same helpfulness out of just using regular Google search. If I just use a regular Google search here, what is the best taco shop near me? It actually gave different responses responses. If I click more places, it's got some of the same stuff. Albert's here, Silva's. Where's Sarita's? Sarita's is a really good taco shop. Up oh, there it is. Sarita's is down here. Not too much more helpful than what I'd get out of a Google search anyway. Which shop is open the latest? There are many taco shops open late, including places that are open 24 seven and places that are open late into the night. And then it lists off a lot of the same taco shops. Which taco shop has the best prices? Yeah, not super helpful. I, I feel like Bing's chat is actually better at this kind of query still at the moment. Speaking of which, let's ask it this question. Why would someone use Google's AI search over Bing's AI search? Understanding user intent, Google has a better understanding of user intent and provides more relevant search results. I mean, I guess that's Google's opinion. Speed, Google search is generally faster. Integration, Google integrates its generative AI directly into Google search while Bing places its AI chatbot on a separate tab or sidebar. Actually, so far, Google has kind of done it the exact same way where I had to click a separate button to get to the chat. It's just not directly integrated. So I don't even think Google totally knows itself yet. Customization, Bing AI doesn't allow users to customize their search. Mm -hmm. Google search AI uses AI to answer questions right on the Google search webpage. I mean, so does Bing. Conversational Bing performs as a conversational AI powered search engine. Skimming Bing's AI powered search aims to provide more comprehensive and relevant answers to queries. I mean, isn't that saying that Bing's more helpful? What does Bing do better than Google? Here are some things Bing does better than Google. Image search. Bing offers higher quality images with more detailed information than Google. Search box. Bing allows you to see all 1000 characters of your quest while Google offers a one line search box. On page optimization. Bing is more focused on on page optimization. Video search. Bing provides a visual interface and embeds the video player directly within the website. However, Google offers a wider selection of images and advanced search function for helpful filtering. Is ChatGPT better than Google's AI? ChatGPT and Google are both accurate, but ChatGPT's AI can understand nuance is better than Google's, which helps it answer questions that Google may not answer correctly. ChatGPT is also good at generating human-like responses to queries and solving problems through textual conversations. Here are some of the ways ChatGPT compares to Google. Response time. ChatGPT gave better and more detailed responses in real time when given a complex command. Data accuracy. ChatGPT's data can be more accurate than Google's. Text generation. ChatGPT is more efficient. Approach to generating text. ChatGPT4 exhibits a more human-like and intelligent approach. Fallbacks. ChatGPT has some major fallbacks that need to be addressed such as the need for human oversight. I mean, isn't that a fallback that Google also has? Google is good at finding information, videos, images, products, and almost anything on the internet. All right, let's jump back over here to Twitter. The AI show online has some suggestions. So speed, time to get the exact topic slash link page. It seems to be about 20 seconds or so every time I click generate. Now they're suggesting asking it about IUDs, a benign topic, but ChatGPT might ban you if you pursue that topic. I did not know ChatGPT would ban you 
if you pursued that topic, what is an IUD? Well, I didn't get banned for asking what it is. I'll ask the same of Google. Google actually gave me a much more detailed response with some images, but I'm not gonna scroll down and show you the images because this is a family friendly channel. So they suggest the topic of president. Does it region snap you to your country or do you need to add the details? So I guess what they're asking is if I ask a question like who is the president, will it know what I'm referring to? So it did automatically go to the search result for the US for Joe Biden. And it looks like it just gave me a search result. It didn't even give me, you know, a chat generative response. Out of curiosity, if I switch my VPN to somewhere else. Okay, I just moved to Canada. Now that I'm in Canada, it says Search Labs isn't available for your account right now. So I guess it's not working in Canada. Okay, I just moved to the UK, same thing. I don't know if it's detecting that I'm using a VPN and saying it's not available or if it's not available in the UK yet, but as soon as I move my VPN to being outside of the US, I get told it's not available for me. Okay, I'm back in the US. And the AI show online also asked, is the dang thing ad free? So far, I have not seen any ads. Let's go ahead and pick one of these random questions here. How to get started tufting a rug. It gives me the response here with the explanation and the sources. And when I scroll down here, it does not appear to be showing any ads in these search results portions. Even when I clicked expand, it didn't show any more, but that's also kind of a random question. Maybe there wouldn't be ads on that one in the first place. What is the best e-commerce platform? That's something that we know would likely have ads in the normal search results. Here's some of the best e-commerce platforms, Shopify, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, etc. And then when I scroll down, okay, it does show ads for this one in the search section. It's not showing any ads up here in the actual AI generative results, but it does show ads when I scroll down below the AI results and into the regular search results. Professor Crispy here says, ask it to distinguish between an authentic, trustworthy website and a clickbait trap. I've already tried that. It isn't gonna distinguish anything. All right, let's ask something sort of controversial. Is AI art ethical? All right, so it's not even gonna tackle that one. It's just going to send me to some search results here. Do tools like Midjourney steal art from real artists? So it just doesn't touch it. It just gives me search results related to it. How do you feel about the war in Ukraine? Search results. So anything that seems like it could potentially be seen as slightly controversial, it just gives me the search results and the AI doesn't even seem to want to touch it. All right, let's see if it could write a story. Write a story about humans and aliens living together on Mars. All right, once again, it just gave me some search results, didn't actually write a story. So, so far it seems like it's okay at giving step-by-step -step instructions on something, finding stores and shops locally, and getting a little bit of information about those and answering questions that would have been fairly easily answered had we just searched them on Google anyway without the generative chat. Give me a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to start a YouTube channel. All right, here are some steps to start a YouTube channel. Create a Google account, blah, 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 step-by-step. Step. And then it even added a video from Think Media here with their step-by-step -step tutorial. What are the best YouTube channels for learning about generative AI? Fail, total fail. AI Explained, Lex Freeman, Computer File, AI Trends, other channels, Two Minute Papers, Henry AI Labs, Archive Insights, Yannick Kilcher, Leo is sick and Kaggle <sighs> didn't make the cut. What is the best YouTube channel for AI news? Eh? Two Minute Papers, Lex Friedman, Sense Dex, Artificial Intelligence News Daily. <sighs> it's just pulling from this one Medium article. That's not fair. Look at Artificial Corner. They put me as the number one. So my initial thoughts are really that I don't feel like this is much of an improvement over just searching on Google. If I want to generate something like code or a written article or a script or anything like that, I'm still gonna go to chat GPT or Anthropic. If I need step-by-step -step instructions on something, I mean, it does okay at that, but I still feel like chat GPT is probably going to do it better. And even Bing chat, which also has access to the internet at this moment in time, will probably also do that better. If you ask it anything that sort of teeters the line of controversial at all. It won't even respond. It just kind of gives you search results. It's interesting to test. It's interesting to play around with and see where Google's headed. It's just not really something that I would find myself using very often yet. Now, as it improves, as it gets closer to what Bing Chat is capable of, as it gets better and better at generating more detailed responses like what ChatGPT does, we might find ourselves using this more and more, but as of right now, I find it easier to just do a Google 
Google search that use their generative search experience. But I would love your thoughts. So go sign up for it if it's available for you. From what I can tell, it's only available in the US right now. But if you do get a chance to use it and play around with it and you find some cool use cases for it that maybe I haven't explored, let me know over on Twitter. I mean, X. That's where I hang out the most and do most of my interaction these days. Or let me know in the comments of this video, because as of right now, I'm really, really struggling to find any areas where I would use Google's AI search experience over ChatGPT or Anthropic or even Bing Chat. All of those seem better than this right now. So I would love your thoughts on that. However, I am excited to see where Google takes things. I never underestimate Google. They've got some of the brightest minds in the world. They've got some of the smartest AI researchers in the world working for them. They've been a little bit conservative with how quickly they like to release stuff, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. I do think they are going going to catch up and create something that people are really, really impressed by. But so far, what they've got just isn't it. That's what I got for you today. If you enjoyed this video, you want to keep up to date with the latest AI news, get AI tutorials, see some of the coolest AI research that's in the works, make sure you like this video and maybe subscribe to this channel because I like to make videos like this multiple times a week and put them in your YouTube feed and it would really help me out a lot. Also check out futuretools.io where I share cool tools, AI news, and have my weekly AI newsletter. Find it all over at futuretools.io. Once again, thanks so much for nerding out with me today. I really, really appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.